Welcome back to Maximum News. I am your host, as always, your friendly neighborhood Simpsons, ugh, friendly neighborhood Simpsons kin, Max Danger Derrett, and I'm joined, as always, by Cybe Sitting of the Triple S League. And Cybe, aren't you glad we didn't record yesterday? Well, we are. I mean, we are so glad. We there was some stuff that came up, and we said we will record tomorrow. You know, and it's too bad too because what kind of news drops on a Tuesday? <laughs> right. Yeah, not like not like that one of the biggest leaks in the history of gaming or anything. Like it's not like the stars totally aligned for us missing yesterday to record today. Yeah, guys, we were gonna talk about the Unity stuff, obviously, that happened this past week and all the BS with that, and of course all the reveals from the Sony State of Play and the Nintendo Directs, but we would be mistaken if we didn't start off today's gaming news by talking about this huge bombshell that dropped this morning. So, Saib, we know that it's like the thing that just will never leave the gaming news headlines for the past year and a half is the whole Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So they're still in the legal proceedings for that. Apparently, uh, because of that, a whole bunch of documents have been getting leaked left and right, just trying to get this deal And they're through. both blaming each other. Right. Well, according to The Verge, it's Microsoft's fault, although I don't know. To no, what... according to The Verge, according to the prosecutors... It's the it's Microsoft's, Microsoft's fault. fault, right? But okay, my bad. The number of times that uh, a government official lied to cover up the pure sheer incompetency is um is 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 pretty. That's a pretty that's a pretty common number. That's that's uh you know how we said you know news doesn't usually drop on a Tuesday. Right. That kind of news happens every like forty five seconds. So right, exactly. So. Yeah, we well, we don't know for sure, but uh, you, mm -hmm. you can speculate all you want. But the more important stuff is the stuff that actually got leaked. And, um, you know, some of it is to be expected, but some of it is uh, pretty exciting. I wouldn't say it's like what we got here is on the level of the GTA 6 leaks that we got. And by the way, Sai, do you know that you remember those GTA 6 leaks? Those happened exactly one year ago. Yeah, it's kind of weird, huh? Yeah, no, it's just time flies by so fast. I got to sworn that was just a few months ago, but no, it was last September. So we're that much farther along uh, to the point we get GTA 6, hopefully soon. Um, but anyways, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into what we got here. So I'm just going to break this down into a few basic categories, and then I'm going to go into the details. So we now have details about Microsoft's mid-gen plans for the Xbox, what they're a, a few small details about what they plan on doing for next gen, as well as a whole bunch of games that are supposedly coming out in the near future. Some of them, maybe not. One thing I should provide a caveat for before I provide the specific details is that this a lot of the stuff, especially the games that are in this these leaked documents, um, were estimates based on three estimates from three years ago before Microsoft bought Cinemax. So a little, little bit before, because they, they went back in time a little bit more to try and like get a uh, file for like information requests and that kind of stuff. So, okay. so you got to remember that, that, that a lot of this stuff was relevant and kind of projected in early, like 2020. Right. Not. And then that was even before, like, you know, um, COVID was the size that it was and everything that went sideways with that. Um, the, the prolonged legal battle that they had to go through for this current merger, um, the battles that Microsoft is currently involved in with a lot of government agencies and, and powers and stuff like that. So it, it really is, as um, Xbox kind of did come out and say, they, they made a statement on it. This is basically, so much has changed. Right. So, so like most of that stuff is like there's lots of changes with this stuff. So for certain, we we can say that some of the stuff in these documents isn't true, and we'll try to point out where we can say pretty confidently that it isn't true. But there's still a lot of stuff that is true. Okay, so let's start with the mid gen stuff. Apparently, next year's side, we're getting a new version of Xbox Series X. It's no longer going to be shaped by, like a uh, rectangular, I don't know, like a, a giant block. Uh, it's not going to be shaped like a cylinder. 
Uh, there's actually a picture of it in the leaked documents if you guys want to look it up online. Uh, it will now have two terabytes of storage instead of one, which is good because I think like stand, it's it was already good that it had a terabyte in the first place compared to like standard PS5s, which I think mm-hmm. was 500 gigabytes. So two terabytes is very welcome. Uh, it will have a USB-C port. Nice. Uh, the controller will have Bluetooth 5.2 and haptic feedback this time around, which... You know, I don't use haptic feedback, um, but I, like I have used it on a couple of games. Like I've used it when I played Demon's Souls both times and it was enjoyable, but you know, it's not necessary, but I enjoy it. Most important thing though, there's not going to be a disc drive. It's going to be all digital. Just uh, a sign of what's to come, unfortunately. And uh, so I will get... Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll, let's just go by category and then I'll ask for your thoughts. So that's all the stuff in regards to the stuff coming out next year. Is this mostly expected, including like the all digital thing for you? Um, it, it is in the sense that you, we know that they're moving in that direction. Uh, it won't be... It won't be everything. Like I, I suspect that the next gen console will have a disc drive because they know how many games are still sold via disc, um, which is a lot. And you don't want to like snub your nose at that group of, of people. And we went through the list when, um, when they did the, this with the last gen, right? Like when the that that idiot was in control at at. Uh, Xbox and he was like, Matrix. "Oh no! If you if you want to play, you know, without having it always on, blah blah blah, then you'll you can totally do that. It's called the last console that we put out." <laughs> and he actually said it, not not like and with he the actually tone said that it, yeah. Sibe, not with the tone that Sibe said, but he actually yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and and so like the outbreak from the 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 cries from that were substantial, and a lot of it boil down to like hey um you you gotta like like you gotta know that this is you guys are looking at the wrong stuff here okay like like a bunch of the people that play your games are are playing your console because they work in places where there is no internet connection and i remember the greatest uh comment was like it was like some guy who worked on uh it was like an aircraft carrier or submarine. It was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm sure I'll, I'll just find my local uh, internet service provider who could provide a, an internet connection to my submarine. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, guys. Right. So yeah, yeah. So I would like to think that they'll continue to support this for the foreseeable future. The disk drives for people that want it. It, it doesn't mm-hmm. affect so much people like me, and I, you know. I, I know it's not good to try and go all digital, but it, it is convenient, and it does seem to be where the rest of the market is going. But you still want people to have the option, and it is nice to have physical media. But mostly, a lot of this is too ex- is perfectly expected. Um, it's just that one thing that I think people are going to want to, that consumers are going to want to start raising their voice about, just to make sure that it continues into the near future. All right, next thing. Um, just a few details on some of the stuff that Microsoft is planning for the next generation of Xbox. Apparently, they're aiming for 2028, which sounds about right. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Xbox Series launched 2020, 2021, something like that. So seven years between consoles, seven or eight years is par for the course. Um, apparently, what they're aiming for with this next console is sort of what they promised us with Crackdown 3 way back mm-hmm. in the day when that came out. I don't know if you guys remember this, but they Microsoft, when they announced Crackdown 3, they were trying to sell it as a platform for them to use cloud-based technology. And the way they would use that is to make Crackdown 3 have multiplayer games where all the environments were destructible. All of it. You remember, I remember those demos. They looked impressive. But it took forever for that game to come out because they couldn't get the technology to work. They couldn't, for whatever reason, get the cloud technology to merge with the physical uh, box or whatever it is. And then Crackdown mm-hmm. 3 ended up being a huge disappointment. But they're trying again. They're trying to turn the next system into a quote. Uh, no, they're trying to make uh, the next system 
capable for, quote, cloud hybrid games. Um, the first of those types of games are going to start being produced between 2024 and 2026. Makes sense. So hopefully they'll be able to produce uh, powerful games that make use of that type of technology. Hopefully it'll be ready this time around. I mean, it's been like over 10 years. Well, but by the time it comes out, it'll have been over 10 years between that and Crackdown 3. And then finally, um, it, it wasn't really clear to me whether or not this was something that they were just investigating or it's actually something that they were planning. But they're looking for something like a mobile controller. And I'm not sure if it's sort of like what Sony's trying to do with the PlayStation Portal, where they have a portable uh, remote play device that allows you to play Xbox games from other points in your house, or if it's just like controllers that you can slide into your phone and play from wherever. But either case, I'm not too excited for it. Uh, but those are just a few details. Uh, any thoughts, Sai? It's a... It's, uh... That that side of the technology thing moves so fast that I'm not sure if those plans are still relevant. Relevant, like there's a lot of gaming stuff on here that that it's like we look at it, and we go, "Wow, that's a lot of that stuff's not relevant anymore." But um, with any kind of form of like mobile controller or integration, mobile devices like that, the tech moves so fast in that field. Um. I think that it's a good idea for them to someday get there Absolutely. and like put that out. But I don't think plans that were being made three to four years ago are plans that are going to be enacted within the next two years. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I really think that there, <clears throat> there's such a difference in current tech and then there's such a difference in the idea of what people want. For me, mostly what I really, really want for a controller is a literal thing that I can like slide my phone into that gives me a controller on either side of it and just lets me play that way. Yeah. And that's, I have a device that does that and it worked really, really, really good. Like absolutely amazing for, for the one game, the one game that I played on my phone, Mm. which I have since stopped playing because it was, uh, it's just like the, the microtransactions just ruined the game. For Genshin? Me. No, no, not actually that. It was a mech game. Oh, and okay. it's just like, it's like, that's the kind of stuff that, that I think there's a lot of market stuff kind of pointing at is like that, that controller support, that grip thing, uh, a smooth caseless cell phone made by anybody is not what you want to be using for anything. Worse yet are those the flippable, you know, the flippable smartphones now, where which we're going back to, where it's like, I saw one in in I had one in my hand just like a week ago, and it is weird, it is unsettling, and the visuals on it are not great. Like there's there's a clear distortion effect where the the, the screen folds, and it is. It is noticeable and it is is annoying. Yeah. Like immediately, trying to watch a, a show or play a game on that is just like it's just wrong. So cell phone technology and handheld gaming technology are two things that are they're so close to each other, but there's something that's not allowing something to work in that in in the way that people want it to. Yeah. And so I think that there's got to be a fix for that before we see kind of a big thing. They can try to launch their own product, like their own device. But I think in a lot of cases, if it doesn't have that, like can use it as a smartphone thing, then what's the point, right? Right. Like that's how a lot of people are going to look at it because a lot of the smartest phones out right now are, are legitimately starting to, you know, offer comparable, you know, stats to, to a, to a console let mm. alone like you know other stuff so it's like right why would you why would you sink so much r&d into something that people already you know are aren't using right like in in that category so it's like yeah or are using in that category but it's just a different thing and they don't need what you have or what you could make unless you can do something really different if you could have nanites build me a controller when i switch my phone into game mode I think we got something there. Right. 
<laughs> but and then and then whenever we're done with it, they just the, the just the nanites just zip into the thing and poof, there you go. Right. I think we're probably a little ways away from that. Yeah, I'd say a hundred years uh, around that. I would say no, no, no. Probably just like twenty five. But yeah, 25? no, seriously. Really? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. Uh, I a man can dream. I uh, hopefully we'll have Elder Scrolls Six by then. A uh, topical joke for each episode of the show. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think it's also just. Like, if they created a, a way for people to play these games on the phone all the time, it, it might be such a convenience that they're afraid that they might not be able to sell as many consoles. I don't know. Just thinking off the top of my head. All right. Let's just get into the juicy stuff right now, guys. This is where all the, the big details are. So, new games. Just to repeat what I said a second ago, not all these are going to be happening. But some of them we can reasonably suspect are, and some of them are kind of obvious. So one of them I can tell you for certain that is on this list of games that are supposedly coming out but are definitely not anymore is Ghostwire Tokyo 2. That game, that game wasn't that bad, but it didn't do that well and it wasn't as great as it should have been. It was projected back in 2021 that that game would do a whole lot better than it did, so obviously they were aiming for a sequel. I I would be willing to bet money, and I am not a betting man, that that is not happening and happening anymore. Uh, so, do you agree? It was a really good idea that needed more, a little bit more time to cook, or a little bit different of an advertising campaign. Mm-hmm. It it was advertised initially like just phenomenally well with that very very um, excitable and adorable uh, lady. Um, oh, yeah. but they, they did, I feel that they kind of lost the direction and tried to like, I, I felt like they were trying to do too much. Yes. Um, and it's also a concept that is, is a little bit, I don't know what, it, it's, it's just a bit not generic. As, it, it took what was supposed to be like something it, really unique and then went kind of generic with it. Yeah. In the sense of, and, and I want to say this like carefully, it's like, the way that the Japanese envision, like, you know, you wake up in an empty city is not the same way that it's done in most of the rest of the world. And so there was a little bit of a disconnect in that. In And, and I think they kind of missed the opportunity there. It's like I, I would have I would have written the story a little bit differently. I would have, like, introduced, introduced it significantly differently. Um, but just generally, yeah, I think they I think they. I think they were not, they didn't do as good of a job as they could have with introducing it. I think the game concept was fine. It's just, it had us, it was always going to have a smaller audience than what they wanted it to have. And yeah, I think once you re, once you realize that, once you kind of get that through your head, you're like, oh, okay, then it's still a fine game. But as always, if there's some idiot in a, in a C-suite room going, this is, terrible i was i wanted this to sell 10 million copies why is it selling 10 million copies well sir the only people who would legitimately normally buy this are like grand total on the planet are like 2 million yeah so if we had just budgeted this for those 2 million people as far as advertising goes we wouldn't have run into this problem no we can sell water to people drowning we could sell that. It's like, no, you really can't. You have a limit. Learn to deal with it. Just move on with your life. Like yeah. Billy Mays stop. is no longer with us. You, you can't yeah. sell snow in a snowstorm anymore. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I completely re- agree with you. Um, I will say, though, if uh, you happen to, for, I, I don't know how this could possibly be you at, at this point in time, but if for some reason you find yourself without a game that you want to play and Ghostwire Tokyo is available for like 20, 30 bucks on Steam. Mm-hmm. I would recommend picking it up because there's enough good stuff there that I think it's worth that price. But anyways, let's move on to some of the more um, obvious stuff. Doom, the new Doom, the, the one to follow up Doom Eternal, which released in 2020. Kind of obvious that that one is coming along. Very excited for it, but you know, it's just like, I'll wait for it when it comes, and I'm sure it's going to be a masterpiece like the other two were. Apparently, it's going to be called Doom Year Zero. 
So what does that mean? Like it's a prequel or something, or does that, I don't know, mark the beginning of a new era in sequel. I don't know. We'll find out. It's not like doom when it comes to the story, doom is the most important story is the most important thing in regards to doom. Mm -hmm. Uh, Although I'll, I'll give it credit, like at least they were trying to do something interesting with Doom Eternal. Um, yeah, I don't I, like. I'm sure you're excited for it too, Seb. Even though you probably make you sick playing that game. Uh, it, it does. It does make me sick real fast, and and it's sad because it's like all Doom games have always all made me motion sick like crazy. Yeah, but I know that that's not the case with everybody. Um, we have a couple of. Uh, friends in the community and other content creators that do suffer from motion sickness normally who don't suffer from motion motion sickness when it comes to doom so uh mm. and again it's kind of weird because it's like i i could play other games you know where, where i don't really have that same problem but those people playing that game you know that that's out for them so it's just it just goes to show it's kind of a weird thing and this is why i think um especially if it's a single player game it's like just add at their person like there's just there's no reason not to. It's like it's an option. People can do it if they want to. It's 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 like the it's like it's like you the sub or dub community. It. It's like yeah. if you buy in a DVD and it's here and it's being sold in a particular country that has that dub, you know, licensed for it. Both tracks are on the thing. You could just switch it over at any time. There's no extra cost for that process. You know, and it just it just opens it up to more people. So yeah, I, I I think that. But yeah, you're right. It's like the the Doom idea, more Doom. I think is always going to be a good thing. Yeah. And I hope that they do the the remaster that they were talking about there, but oh, yeah. also the all the new content too. So that's what I would like to see. Sure. Yeah, I'd be down for all that. More Doom. That's it's sort of like I'd like to see Microsoft along with Fallout trying to push Doom as sort of one of their flagship franchises, especially because it should be noted that do, I do not see anything regarding Halo in this goddamn document. But anyways, um, before I get too mad, another thing here, side which is which is really weird. Yeah, like, it's really weird. Like, it's genuinely really weird that there's absolutely no mention of Doom or no, it mentions of Doom, but Fable. So, sorry, I, I meant I meant Halo. I meant Halo. Right. Uh, there's no mention of, of Halo. I'm, Doom was on the brain. Um, there's no mention of Fable. There's no mention of like three or four other titles. Uh, Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark. Um, wasn't there a Fade to Black yeah. remake coming at some point? It's like there's a, there's a ton of stuff that I was expecting to see in these documents that were absolutely nowhere to be found whatsoever. And that seems, that seems a little weird. Right, like it genuinely feels odd that like Phil isn't talking about any of these games with anybody right. that was involved in this little bit. That's weird to me. That's that's like I wouldn't say red flag, but it's it's bizarre. Well, let's just it's hope really bizarre that one of the reasons why is because they didn't really with the slides that I was looking at, they didn't really seem to be projecting anything for 2025 or 2026, which if Fable, well, I don't know. They did show the CGI trailer for Fable, which Mm -hmm. I would hope suggests that it's coming out next year or 2025 at the latest. Perfect Dark, I don't think it's 2025 or 2026 at the earliest. So I don't know. Hopefully there's nothing there, but it is still concerning, especially with everything that we know about those games. Um. Also, side. Does this pretty much confirm that the reports about Oblivion remastered are true? That's no, what, because it's no? a different. It's a different Oblivion. What? What do you mean? Like, like the the project that was leaked a little while ago by on the on the what is it, the four chan or Reddit or whatever yeah. it was. That was not the same project as the one that they're talking about here. Right. Well, fair enough. But like, they're still aiming for whatever they want the oblivion remastered to be. Yeah, yeah, there, there, we know that there is there we know we know and we've known for a long time that there is a remaster coming of oblivion. But the remaster was the one that we heard the rumor about where it was like it, it's running it in unreal at the same time that it's running the base Bethesda engine. Yeah. That particular rumor um this this rumor actually kind of squashes that even more. Because it's an internal 
Microsoft Studio that was supposedly that's supposedly working on the Oblivion remaster. Right. So that contradicts the idea that this other studio that's not actually affiliated with Microsoft at all is working on a studio using one of their competitors' game engines. It yeah, yeah. it's just it's really weird and it comes off this again didn't mention it at all and but we know that there is lots of games that did not get mentioned at all which makes me believe that um maybe they had maybe they had packets that they were uploading and this was just the first packet mm-hmm. and they had like kind of like structured everything in the packets so that it was easier to kind of go through it's like this packet is mostly you know bethesda stuff and some other things and some other things and some other things and yeah it's all good to go um that might be what's happening here mm-hmm. and why we didn't see other stuff on it but no i think i think this I think the internal developed Oblivion remaster kind of puts a lot of water on that idea that we're getting a um, an unreal crossover hybrid with the original engine Oblivion. I think that that I think that that was I think that always was basically like it wasn't a thing that they were actually working on like with with the approval. I think they were working on it as a as a vertical slice pitch. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what was going on there. And that's what we heard about was this vertical slice pitch project that they were working on that they would then pitch to Microsoft say, Hey, look what we can do. If you can make a deal with, you know, unreal, then we can get this thing going. Here's the projected, like what it would look like and feel like, but I don't know. I just watched a, a video on um, Skyrim in 2023 mm-hmm. and Oh baby. That, that, looks... that is that is a different game. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, that is a different game entirely. There is, uh, it's it. It was from a project I never heard about, and if they could do that with that, I, I again like the bar is really high for an Oblivion remake. Like you, yeah. you like you can't just slap some, like you know four K textures on it, not fix the animation engine, not fix a bunch of the other goofy. Yes. <laughs> So much goofiness in that yeah. game. Stop right the there, audio. criminal scum. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It's like get that stuff sorted out with first. Then then we can talk about this because like and again, I think, you know, we, we've been having this conversation a lot with because of Starfield in our Discord. It's like people were expecting a little bit more from them. And when we're talking about like, you know, well, what are they doing, you know, in preparation for the next Elder Scrolls game? It's like they're doing a lot, mm-hmm. like a lot. They're, they've got, I've heard that they're upgrading, like the upgrades that we saw in the engine from Fallout to Starfield is nothing in, in the way of what they're preparing for the next jump. And they still don't have all of the technology that actually exists that they actually need in order to do that. Right. And I think we're, we're seeing that slowly starting to like... Materialize. Um, materialize, yeah. It's slowly starting to come through. And I think what we're seeing with some of the modded versions of of Skyrim with these things that they actually require a a subscription in order to do. Um, It's looking like it's like potentially, I mean, this is potentially game changing stuff. Like the, the whole talking to the companions, like legitimately just talking to them. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody has got to add that into a game officially at some point with tech that they own. Yeah. And Bethesda is probably going to be one of the likely ones. I hope so, because like, I can't, I can't really see anybody else being able to afford to do that, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So, and the prestige. Yeah. Yeah, That's a compelling argument that you make about the two rumored uh, Oblivion remasters canceling each other out uh, and didn't consider that. But you know, if uh, it doesn't materialize, at least we'll have Skype. One cancels the other out for sure. Like, like we don't know if it's a, it's a two way street now because of there's things that have been changed, but Sure, um, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's up in the air. If it comes, I'll be happy. Uh, especially, uh, we'll have Sky Oblivion, and then we'll have the other one, and then the people will be able to play it on console. All right, two more, and then we got to move on. Um, Fallout Three Remaster. This that seems more likely because yeah, yeah. Well, and again, we know that Fallout Three, Fallout One, Fallout Two, they're all being. There's there's something going on with them. We yeah. don't know what it is yet. I've heard I've heard an insane amount of rumors recently. I've heard that a recent top trending game that just came out are in talks to redo um, 
Fallout 1 and 2 in the same engine as the, the game that they just released. It would be a smaller project because the, those games are actually quite small when you when you look at it from like a a, a list, a, like a bullet point list. It's actually pretty, they're, they're both smaller projects and you could like, you could reasonably do it with um, like, especially if you had access, especially if you had access to existing databases full of content and sure. 3D objects and stuff like that, which there is a ton in that universe. Uh, 76 has really, really upped that as far as like the technology that is available for somebody if they wanted to do a three dimension or like a 3D game um, remaster, uh, whether it's turn based or whether it's it's uh, action based. I, I don't know. I really hope they keep the turn based in Fallout 1 and 2. They um, won't. I well, I, I, it depends on how you do it. If it's a remaster, like if it's a re, it, it not a not a not a reimagining, but like if it's like, hey, it's a remaster, then yeah, I expect they will. Them to keep that there. Yes. If it's a if it's a reboot, like a total reboot, which I am expecting that to come at some point, but probably not for the next decade. Hmm. Um, a total reboot of the Fallout universe to do it right from scratch the first time. Um, and just really open up like a lot of stuff. And this might, this might come with like the advancements in, in AI that we get, um, a fully lore fleshed out everything following proper rules right from the get go, tracking a story that, that starts at Mariposa and goes all the way through the, with all the different choices and all the different worlds and, or not worlds, but, um, kind of like, you know, like the, the, the different areas that are kind of cut off from each other. Mm -hmm. It's like having that, following that, tracking that, whether you're tracking with Harold, whether you're, you know, something it's like, there's, there's room there for sure. And if done right with like new tech, like new tech that we aren't even thinking about right now, then yeah, I think that that's well, like obviously a really good choice. If it's but, not being developed very actively right now it's inevitable that it will happen sometime in the near future there's just yeah. too much money to be made uh remastering and uh upping the fidelity on the old gameplay and the graphics yeah, and the one thing moment. the one thing that i will say that we are definitely going to get and this isn't strictly xbox news but just just from a general perspective the the big gaming universes if they can get their stuff together for this AI revolution in gaming, where you basically just plug in an existing games in like an hour, the AI plays through it a, a million different ways with all of this side content and, and exploring every single video everybody's ever made on the lore and decides that, all right, here's the stuff that the Fallout universe is, is going to be based on. We're going to reboot the series from scratch. You start out playing a key, playing through a key critical moment, and then you get to follow whatever path that you're interested in. So if you want to follow Joshua Graham's story, yes, you could do that. Yes. You, from, from beginning to end, you could, you could literally play through that as either, and you, you're given the choice. Do you want to play as a companion of him? Do you want to play as him? Do you want to play as somebody who just, you know, kind of is in the same vicinity of and you hear about what's going on and, and that kind of stuff? It's like those are the options that the new tech, whether or not it's a disruption to devs and, and studios as we know them, will at some point in the future offer us. And that is the technology that will really set apart the studios that have the IPs, that have the interesting stuff that people will latch on to. And whether or not they can do it successfully or whether they're going to like do it. It's like, yeah, you could play modern warfare now, but everybody's a clown because the AI said so. <laughs> right. So yeah, <laughs> good luck on, on good luck on the, the race to the uh, first AI inspired multiverse. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. I'd be down. I call I call Joshua Graham as my avatar because he's just too BA. All right, and that's pretty much it. Like, it's, I mean, there is Dishonored three, but I don't think that's happening. Just with everything that Arcane has been going through with Redfall, it's tragic because Dishonored one and two are legendary. Uh -huh. but yeah, yeah. It's just no chance. But that's pretty much everything that was in there. It's mostly stuff to be 
expected, but a couple things here and there that are really, really interesting. And it shows that Microsoft in some degree sort of knows what they're doing and is sort of lining up with what you and I were suspecting that they would be doing over the next couple of years. Um, guys, do you have any thoughts about these leaks that uh, we maybe that we didn't cover? Or do you have any thoughts about the stuff that Sam and I said? Put us also in the comment section below. We'd love to keep the conversation going on this because this is this is pretty huge. All right. Let's move on to this thing. The other huge thing that happened this past week. Side, the unmitigated gall of these goddamn billionaires. Go. Um, so, yeah, Unity. <laughs> has been has been the exact has opposite been gutted, of that. has been gutted by and this is the weird thing it appears as if it may have been gutted by members of their own board who whispered in the king's ear and said you know what my lord we should charge those filthy peasants every Everybody here agrees that they're not paying their fair share. And if you were to take it over and demand that those peasants pay us their fair share, our fair share, of course, it, that that this will become a, a beautiful partnership that will, will make everybody better. And the king, the mad king sitting there going, yes, of course, charging the peasants. That's, of course, what we'll do. How much should we tax them? Everything. Oh, Brilliant. We shall tax you all for everything. You know, this this idiot on the throne, right? Yeah. That appears after having seen uh, the evidence that uh, Upper Echelon, a friend of the, the channel, yep. uh, was was talking with him just recently about this, about some of the other stuff going on. Um, uh, and and it's like, really, there's some really, you know, he, he, he absolutely nailed this. Absolutely nailed absolutely nailed this investigation because there was a member of the board who sold all their shares. There was another member of the board who sold uh, over two thirds of all their shares. Yeah. And there was another board member who sold almost again, a, a, a significant amount of their shares right before this news went active and they sell a product that could theoretically really really gain from the death of unity we're talking to like yeah these guys would lose their position on that unity board but they may go from making several billion dollars a year to several dozen billion dollars a year if unity were to fold so this is just yeah these people make nancy pelosi look like a saint <laughs> this is this is uh, this is all kinds of game of thrones right here yeah We've got we've got betrayals. We've got things that look like it's like insider trading. We've got things that look like you know just like political hack jobs. Like just everything happening all at once. I, again, if you wrote this into a script in a movie, people would say you're being unrealistic. This this stuff do doesn't happen this way. Yeah. There's no mustache twirling villains, except for in this case, there's several of them, and they're all working and playing off of each other and being idiots about it. Nobody nobody bothered to like field test this at all. Then they came out, started to saying that, oh yeah, no, hold on a second, we know exactly how to do this. How would you do this? Oh, well, just trust us. We know how to how to do this. We're not going to use this for nefarious purposes at all. And it just it I I could go on for like two hours as to the drama of what's been happening, all the names, all the 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 places, the numbers, the people. Um, but we can't really do that because we don't have the time for it. But what I will say is that that it's it is a total um, cow manure hitting a giant fan. It's just, there is just, everything is messed up. Everything is going sideways, and there is there is no clear indication as to what in the world is going on here. And so, yeah, really messed up. However, we have some good news. We have some really good news. Um, and this is this is probably better news, because what you, what you kind of expected to hear was, you know, everybody's jumping over to Unreal, uh, which is in itself, in and of itself, its own problem. Unreal is a wonderful engine. I have even be ten been tempted to to do some work with it. It really is 
a really good engine that can really allow for a lot of creativity. Um, I have argued and spoken with uh, Tim Sweeney several times. He is sometimes I think he's a, a James Bond villain. Other times I think that he's hitting the nail on the head as far as like you know freedom and stuff goes. Mm-hmm. But I don't trust him completely. I th- I think that you know he did one make one of my absolute favorite games. Him as in like solo. He he was the only developer who made it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that he's got skills and stuff like that. But I don't want ever. I, I really don't. And this is why I push back on the whole like you know Bethesda's you know Bethesda's uh, game engine, the engine that um, that C- that CDPR was using, the engine that uh, Larian is using. It's like there is benefits. There's a lot of downsides, but there is also a lot of upsides to having your own engine, including your having your freedom. Because what's what a lot of these developers woke up with is basically Darth Vader saying, calling them up, saying that, um, hey, just so you know, we might take all of your money. We might bankrupt you tomorrow. Pray I do not alter the deal further. That's what they woke up to. Imagine trying to run a small business. You, you got 50 employees or 10 or 5 or whatever, and you're suddenly looking down the barrel of a gun that can essentially end you right there and then, not just not just like take not just like force you to restart your company from scratch, but literally sue you into the ground. Into the ground for money that you will never be able to make back in your entire lifetime. That's what that's what this unity proposed, and then they were like, "Oh no, but we won't do that." It's like, yeah, yeah, and I'm sure you know pigs will fly someday. If you have the power to destroy somebody, you you can guarantee that somebody will take advantage of that at some point. It's just it's just human nature, unfortunately. Yeah. It's kind of messed up in that regard. But yeah, it's just it's just it's just inevitable. And and why people think that? Oh yeah, no, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's like. No, it's not going to be fine. This, this is this is a mad king sitting on his throne, just going, "I will do this. I will do that. This doesn't make any sense to anybody, but I don't care because I'm I can do it. I'm the king." It's Louis the Sixteenth um, before the start of the French Revolution, <laughs> exactly. But in good news, Relogic, the indie developer behind Terraria, nice. made an absolutely an absolutely banger statement. Uh, they came out today and they said that they're horrified at what they're seeing. They know what other they know the feeling that these devs are going through. They they had a lot of issues when developing Ter- Terraria, which is an amazing game, by the way. Um, and they feel that the freedom and the control that that so many studios just felt, you know, just the floor drop out from below them. Um, it's 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 not just enough to just say we condemn this you know, hope that everybody can make it through and that's it. So what they did is they donated. And right now I believe it's just two. So it's, it's $200,000 that they have donated to the two open source game engines, Godot game engine and FNA framework, which Hmm. is another framework for another. It's a, it's a much smaller, um, it's a much smaller engine that that again is open source, which means you get all of the tools to do whatever you want with, and you can just run with it from there. And yes, it's not as big or as fancy as as Unreal, but with support and funding like this, this studio giving them a hundred thousand dollars each, and they're said that they're they're looking into a couple other engines that they're going to give money to. This is a great thing. This is the action that we need to kind of help people because there's a lot of these studios that are going, yeah, we're we're basically screwed unless something changes here. Well, the change is here, and that is the these bigger studios going, hey, just so you guys know, we are 100% behind you. Not only are we behind you, we're going to give the, the tools that could save your company. We're giving them a huge financial aid to help them accelerate several of their programs and and several of their things that they're wanting to adapt into. Um, And then they're, they're also willing to help out in a bunch of other, other ways too. It's like, that's, that's beautiful. That's what we need. That's the kind of like hardcore logical thinking that we really, really desperately need to make this stuff work and to really make this, uh, um, to change this kind of stuff around 
because it's not just enough to say, all right, we'll take all the business from the one Mad King and we'll go over to this other empire and we'll really hope that we're not going to have a Mad King over here at the same time. This kind of stuff says, no, 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 no. We're giving you an expanse that you can set up your own kingdom in. Go nuts. And so that's that's the that's the beautiful thing that's coming out. Of, it's come out of this uh, a little bit similar to the whole D and D debacle earlier this year, mm-hmm. where a ton of smaller companies were able to say, "Hey, we put together our own thing. Check us out. Use this. We 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 want you to use it. We're not going to police you like these other guys do." So, but this yeah, is- the the trust has been absolutely shattered in this. Yeah, this is, well, to that, though, what you're saying there, that is true capitalism. When mm-hmm. when you are enable people to actually compete within the market by donating to them and allowing their engines to go up against the big guys, they don't have to pull this sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, so hopefully uh, they can take that and run with it. Um, I, I, I think, man, I'd like to think that this stunt that unity pulled off is enough to make a whole bunch of people go over to unreal or go over to all these other systems. But I don't think it's as simple as that as much as I would like it to be just because of how many people have used unity up until this point. And plus, uh, as we still need to mention, uh, unity has made a public statement saying that they're reviewing their policies. So Mm -hmm. hopefully that means a complete reversion. I don't know. I mean, like you were just saying side, uh, you like to think that people can't be this malicious, but then they end up being that malicious. So I don't know, maybe they won't revert it, but it would be the biggest mistake that they've ever made. You know, and people will go over to Unreal Engine and to these other uh, other uh, engines. But mm-hmm. if that happens, maybe good can come out of that. But let's just hope it doesn't come to that. All right. So that was that. And then finally, we just um, got to talk about a few announcements that were made regarding the Nintendo Direct and the Sony State of Play that happened this past week. Both of them were decent showings overall, um, mostly stuff that we already knew was coming. Um, a couple things, though, that really put my excitement over the edge. Um, let's start with the Sony State of Play. First of all, obviously, Spider-Man 2 is coming out uh, in almost exactly a month. Uh, we'll be releasing this tomorrow, which will be Wednesday, the 20th of September. And uh, Spider-Man 2 is coming out on October 20th, so one month later. And God side, everything that I just see about this game just continues to just bring my hype level up to the nth degree. Did you see how much bigger the map is going to be? Not only is it just Manhattan, but they have the the other boroughs. I think it's Brooklyn. And then um, what's the other the other one that's just... I, I, I can't remember, but... The, the, the stuff that they added on Queens, Queens, Queens. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Queens and Brooklyn, they have those now and it makes the map almost two times bigger and it looks great. It looks so good. And the switching between miles and Peter Parker looks seamless. I don't think that was in the trailer itself, but it like devs were showing how it works on Twitter and it looks great. Uh, and yeah, just, <laughs> Fantastic. And then, of course, I think the big stinger for everybody was, well, no, there was the uh, fact that uh, Resident Evil 4 Separate Ways, that DLC is coming out in a couple of days, which I'm excited for because RE4 Remake was dope. And you can't have RE4 Remake without RE4 Separate Ways Remake. So I'm looking forward to playing as uh, Ada. And uh, yeah, the fact that we only had to wait a week is uh, pretty exciting. And then, of course, the, the, the thing that I was just going to say was the big stinger was Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Man, so I've, I'm on Final Fantasy Fever right now. I, I'm one of the people that really, really loved Final Fantasy XVI. And uh, I, I still need to get back to finishing Remake, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part One. But uh, what I have played of it so far, I enjoyed. And I cannot wait to go to some iconic locations from the original game, like the Casino Planet. We finally got to see the Casino Planet from Final Fantasy VII, uh, the original one. And then uh, what were a couple of the other ones, uh, locations that they showed? Well, we got to see Zack, finally, which was cool. Um, some other stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, cloud on the Segway, which was whack, but whatever. And then, uh, yeah, a couple of other. Th- oh, we got to see Kite Seath, finally. I-, I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but... <laughs> he, he's got to be in the party and apparently the game's going to be what a hundred 
plus hours of content, which is amazing because I think Final Fantasy Remake Part 1 was only like 40 or 50. So double that. So that means like whenever Part 3 comes around, it's going to be like 200 hours, right? That's good. Lord. Better be. <laughs> I mean, they're just going to keep milking the uh, crap out of Final Fantasy 7 until the end of time. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna just, they're going to milk it till the end of time. Yeah. Oh, Lord. And well, just as long as I eventually get my Final Fantasy 9 remake. Um, but yeah, looks cool. And it is coming out February 29th of next year, which is uh, pretty good timing. I look forward to it. And then, yeah, Avatar and Helldivers uh, both look fine, but uh, not something that is particularly on my radar. Uh, before we move on to Nintendo Direct, side, any thoughts on any of these or anything I missed? Yeah, I'm, I'm annoyed that we are missing the greatest... Um the greatest simulation that we can get in avatar. Uh, oh. the fact that they have no like tail joining scenes is just really like, well, you don't know it's that really, you don't it's know really that disappointing. you don't know, you know? that though. <laughs> and besides, even if it's not in the base game, you know, modern's going to add that stuff in because the world is I, full of weird I, people. I can't, I can't, I can't. There's, um, again, robot chicken with the, with the episode of like, where where the, the the girl explains to him like you know ah by joining our tails we're we're becoming one and and he's like oh wow this experience that he just like mind goes back in time to him joining tail with all the animals that he did <laughs> it's like it's like, it's like wait a second wait a second what's going on here so yeah no I always like to poke fun at that um, I've never seen that man that hilarious. is that is the that uh, avatar I I wish I hope that they do it right. I hope that they do a good job with it because mm-hmm. it, it it is as much fun as I like to poke at it. It is it's still a good product. Um, it's still good. It's not the best series in my mind. I know there's some people who went out and learned na- na- Navi, yes, so they whatever it's called. It's like, else. And these were the same people who mocked, um, you know, friends growing up that were like, you know, learning Klingon. It's like, yeah, hilarious. Oh, how the Oh, how the 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 um, times have changed. The Michael, no, the Michael Scott saying, "Oh, how the tables have turned, turned tables." <laughs> Man, I I need to watch more of The Office. I I we just my wife and I we just finished going through Curb Your Enthusiasm, and uh, The Office seems to be sort of like that same type of humor. We watched a couple of episodes. We really need to get back mm-hmm. to it. Anyways, um, what was I just about to say? Oh, yeah, Avatar. Yeah, the game looks good. Uh, let's yeah. hope that it's not like, oh, well, Anthem looked good, but look how that turned out. Let's hope it's actually a good product. And then... Yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. Finally, Nintendo Direct. Uh, some really, really... Like, I'm not over the moon about these announcements, but I'm in, really intrigued about a good a number of them. So we, we did learn at the last Nintendo Direct that there was going to be a Princess Peach game coming down the pipeline. We finally got to see some gameplay for it. Um, crap! I can't remember what the title was off the top of my head, but it looked charming. It looked nice. So you get to see Princess Peach try on a bunch of these different outfits, and she gets all these different abilities, sort of like her version of what uh, Mario got to do in Super Mario Odyssey. And it looks nice. It, it, it looks like a good deal of fun. I just wonder, like, if that's going to separate her off enough that maybe she can get her own franchise, kind of like what. Luigi was able to do with Luigi's Mansion or if it's going to be too similar to Odyssey but it looks good I mean if I didn't have a bunch of other games that I need to get to I'd probably play it you Um, know I heard I heard a rumor a long time ago like a long time ago I can't I don't know if it was Stardew Valley or if it was a game like Stardew Valley I heard they pitched it to to Nintendo as a form of like having it, it was like the the ultimate, you know, I, I know this is kind of, you know, not accurate, but the, the ultimate kind of air quotes girl game. And it would star Princess Peach, you know, setting up, building a farm, doing all that kind of stuff. And apparently Nintendo said no. Now, it's a rumor. I can't back it up. But the point of that is, is that they have had a gold mine with her. And with a lot of other characters from the Mario universe that they just never did. One of the funniest and most coolest things I've seen on like YouTube shorts recently is the um, Toad from the Mario oh, universe yeah. is like a drug dealer or something like that. And <laughs> well, I mean, he it's a mushroom head. <laughs> it's the funniest stuff in the universe because he's like, he's like, 
talking like, you know, he's like Walter White or some. It's absolutely, it's like, that is brilliant. Um, not to say that they should do that, obviously, but just the they amount should. of cool characters that they have in the universe that they haven't really touched or they leave untouched for so long. And it's like, we could, you could, like, can you make anything? Right? Like, like just give us something. You give know, us anything. You know goddamn well that Waluigi is just a $10 million game exactly. in the making, for God's sake. All right. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, we got more footage from Super Mario RPG. Really looking forward to playing that. The F-Zero 99, I'm intrigued by it. I don't know how well that's going to work. Uh, I mean, if it works, great. But 99 people uh, trying to play f-zero it's hard enough when it's just one of you against like a few npcs given how fast everybody's going but if it works great and plus we get more f-zero right mm-hmm. um tomb raider one through three remastered i know a few people that are going to be really really happy about that and the remastering actually looks pretty good yeah uh, yeah it looks i saw it it looks really really good i there were <laughs> You know, it was a bunch of girls who sent me that right away. They're like, oh, my God, look yeah. at this. This looks so great. I can't wait to play this. It's like, again, again, I feel that the they, that the the original fan base was a lot different than a lot of people assumed it was. Yeah. yeah dude, the people that I know that are excited about this are all chicks. Mm-hmm. All chicks. Uh, well, well as, yeah. as Mooney likes to say, she really likes playing an attractive character. Sure. And, I mean, you can't go wrong with Lara Croft. One thing that I'm wondering, though, is whether or not the controls are going to stay the same or if they'll have an option for you to have improved controls. Because I don't know, like, Tomb Raider 1, that game is a pain in the ass to play. <laughs> Did you ever I, play I, it? I would, I would suspect that they've updated the control scheme. Uh, they better. Yeah, I, I think so. It's it is kind of one of those things that it's like early gaming got very wrong in a lot of ways. Yeah. Oh man, fade to black. Oh, <laughs> what a nightmare that was. Right. Control scheme created by either like monkeys or like scorpions. One of the two. Gosh. It wasn't good. We may complain a lot about the way games are made nowadays but man we just had to go back and play some of those early ps1 games to realize how lucky we actually have how actually well, lucky I mean, we are even, now even games today i had i had this one game that a, a buddy sent me is like hey i'm working on this game try it out again i i'm assuming that it was because it was from japan that the control scheme is just weird i had to press get this e v k and P all at the same time. Why? Whilst using the control in arrows. What? I don't know. I don't know if he thought I had an extra hand or if I had somebody helping me play. Did- but I don't know how you're supposed to press those and use movement controls at the same time. So, yeah. I, 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 I guess I'm assuming that was a con- there's some kind of a, it's a controller thing something. I don't know. Well, there's some p- people in the world, like places in the world, like Russia, where, you know, their normal yeah, gaming yeah, was, difficulty was, is fear and hunger, right? <laughs> right. Well, it was E to aim, P to fire, but then you had to have the, um, in order to actually aim, you had to use the arrows. Mm-hmm. So, again, it's like, on my standard keyboard, I'm going like, this is not doable, <laughs> And no ability to change keys. No no key config at all whatsoever. And he taunted me too because he had a picture of a keyboard. It's like, press this button, then press this button, then press this button. It's like, all at the same time? Yeah. And how are you doing I'm that not, while holding I, your... I don't, I don't have a foot-long nose, so I don't know what to do here. Yeah. I'm a little confused. I have a foot-long something. And then I the other game that we... <laughs> <don't> just, <laughs> sorry. All right. And then we got a couple more. Uh, Unicorn Overlord. You know... Talk about underrated game developers in the world of gaming right now. Vanillaware, you can make an argument that they are the most underrated. Dragon's Crown, 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim, some of the best games that you will ever play. um, And hardly anybody has ever played them. And Unicorn Overlord is the next one that's coming out from them. And it looks great. Not only does it look visually gorgeous with their trademark aesthetic, 
but it's a throwback to old school tactical RPGs, which by God, we need more of those, especially with how well received games like Chain Echoes and uh, Sea of Stars have been recently. So kudos to them. And then finally, it's nice to have a remaster of Paper Mario at the Thousand Year Door. That is a great game. And it's great that mm-hmm. we can finally be able to play it on a modern console. So those are my highlights. Did, uh, did I miss anything, Seb? Um, no, I didn't get a chance to review all of them. I was um, I was fighting bears earlier today, oh. so <laughs> I, 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 it's been a wild past couple of days. I'm going to be doing it again here for the next couple of weeks. So um, please let us know what you what you want and, and help me out. I know that Rogue Trader got a new trailer. I don't think that was part of any of this, though, mm-hmm. but that popped up two days ago. Um, and then there's a bun- been a bunch of other stuff, and there's just a litany of new... Baldur's Gate stuff, rumors, info, mods. The mm. mods are, are taken off like crazy. Starfield mods. Oh my goodness, already the difference between modded and unmodded Starfield is like, yeah, it, it's extreme. And we're like two weeks in on this stuff. It's ridiculous. There's, there's over 2,000 mods now. Oy. Guess how much so, Starfield they played in the last week? Probably like an hour and a half. I, <laughs> I, that's pretty close, actually. Two hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, I wish I could get back to it so I could try out those mods. But yeah. And now Liza P came out today. Yep. <laughs> Liza, Liza P oh looked great. Uh, uh, there's two other games that are on my uh, on my short list. I still haven't finished Jagged Alliance. I still mm. haven't finished Baldur's Gate three. Uh, I still have, but a lot of this is has to do with work stuff, and I had dental stuff, and there was computer stuff, and and so all this stuff, and and it's it's really frustrating not to be able to finish this stuff, and the fact that everything dropped again. I would have I would have killed to have any one of these games drop in January. Yeah. I really would have. Like it would have just been so helpful, but no. Yeah, I. I, now I have a month to get through Liza P and play a crap ton of uh, Starfield. And I also have to do games for the channel for Spooktober. God, there's no time. All right. Mm-hmm. You know what? Before mm-hmm. I get into an angry rant, let's just cut the show there. <laughs> Guys, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm in a good mood. But, man, it's just... Ugh. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Maximum News, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this particular episode. Because when you do that, it not only tells the YouTube algorithm that this video is worth watching, but all the other videos on the Triple S League channel. So please do that. It's free, quick, easy to do. Helps us out a lot. I want to thank Saib as always. Uh, Saib, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, no, just keep... Uh, please check out um, any, any of our shows, especially Sinometry and a couple other ones on the channel um and again apologies uh mooney i uh ash we've all been under the weather we've all had just not a not a good time Mm -hmm. um lately with with trying to get content and stuff out so please uh please forgive us we are we are working on a lot of stuff and um yeah we're gonna we're gonna get out more content as quickly as we can but it's been a rough couple of weeks yeah, please be patient, guys. Share their stuff if you can. And you guys can follow me just at Max Jared on all the regular forms of social media. I got links to that and such stuff in the description box below. Thanks, guys. And until we do this again next week, I want to remind you, as always, and as per usual, stay yellow.